Hey, I'm Ryan Whitling, and you're watching ACI TV. Perfect. Fantastic. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the second edition of ACI. No, it's not. This yes, is it ACI is. TV. ACI TV. Um, coming to you very sterile and very, um, maybe not a metre and a half away from each other, but um, we're coming to you for, the, uh, like we said, the second episode and uh, under very trying circumstances and situations for everyone in the BMX industry and everyone in general. How are you anyway? Um, I'm very um, claustrophobic right now. <laughs> I cannot see a thing, my cobbles no, are so up. up. <laughs> I thought this was a good idea at the start, but I can't see anything, so... Um, I think we've fixed the audio only to muffle our voices. Yeah, maybe, maybe this was a good idea in theory, but... Um, with the magic, magic of television, uh, I think we might uh, make things... <laughs> <laughs> magic of TV. <laughs> that is so much more comfortable. <laughs> anyway, just in case you didn't hear us before, welcome to the second edition of ECI TV. Uh, coming to you from um, ECI Imports with Shane from BMX Ultra and, and Gary. Gary. <laughs> uh, I'm still Gary. I'm still Gary, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry, we shouldn't be looking down the whole time, but we are amateurs, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the first episode and got a little bit out of it. We do apologise for the audio in the first one. Um, we are learning as we go along, and I think we've got it a little bit more dialed this show. So um, please, if you've got any issues or any suggestions, email in or um, or just keep them to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Who would they email them to, Gary? Did you you're, you're, the IT, you're the IT guy. We had this trouble last time. It's like ECI BMX at... No, BMX. no. no. <laughs> I don't it's know. ECITV at bmxultra.com. There you go. It's, it's <laughs> as easy as that, and I don't know or why. Or they could go to our new website. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Some breaking news. Okay. <laughs> Tell them, tell them all about our new website, mate. Well, we can tell them about it later on our running sheet. It's not actually mentioned in the you intro. Probably just, or... You probably just turned the audio off. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still going. <laughs> anyway, like I said, we are very professional and um, we, we, are, we are here to bring you some BMX news, uh, BMX race news, but um, unfortunately, there's not a lot happening around Australia, so... But we put... Um, things in place so when it does start again <laughs> yes we have got some um, roaming correspondents in other states that are going to fill us in in the future once uh, everything gets up and running again uh, we've got Owen Douglas out of Blackman Bicycles in New South Wales it's going to give us a rundown um, on what ha what's happening in his state uh, we also have Bruce Morris from Lux BMX to tell us about Queensland. Lux BMX Race. I'm <coughs> sorry. <laughs> um, Nathan Fox from Tailwind Cycles in South Australia. And Paddo in Tasmania. From Paddo BMX. So in the future, once everything gets up and running, we will have a lot of information coming in from those guys. We are hoping to have episodes uh, minimum of monthly so that we can let you know what's happening in the following month. If things happen the way we believe it will happen, we'll probably come to you fortnightly. But anyway, at this stage, it's monthly and we'll have reports uh, f um, coming in in the future. So, okay. What's next? Coronavirus. Coronavirus. So, <coughs> as we've said it already, things have been postponed and suspended all over the place. Uh, the nationals are, are suspended at this stage where they're talking about possibly November. Um, all the refunds have, uh, are in the process. Everyone's getting a, a full refund. And what it does mean, it means that the, the entries will be opened up again. So even if you didn't enter for the original uh, national titles, you will be able to enter for the, for the new ones. So what is interesting is um, a bunch of people decided they were still gonna go to Tasmania, but now Tasmania has closed their borders. Ah, that's true. Yeah, I was, I was actually talking to um, Bruce uh, Morris the other day, and he was heading over to Tasmania um, because he'd still had it all booked and thought he'd make it a holiday instead and just get a bit of riding in. But yeah, they have closed their borders, mm. so that's shut everything down. But anyway, things will go on. BMX will survive. 
That's just right. means that um, we've started a BMX race show and there's no BMX <laughs> racing. <so. laughs> a bit that ironic. <laughs> that doesn't mean you can't ride your bike, though. What, no, that's true. What do you suggest, Gary, that people do? Look, there's a lot of things. Um, there's a lot of things in regards to training, um, sprint. You know, you can utilise the, the sprint block through Sean Dwight, uh, a great little training device. So we'll show a little bit of footage on that. And um, the other thing is that there are a lot of training DVDs out there that a lot of people mightn't be aware of. I just happen to have. <laughs> So as you can see, there's a bit of a collection of training DVDs that um, we carry at ECI Imports, but you can get them through any bike shop around Australia. Um, I'll get, go through a few titles. Fastest First Straight DVD, Sprinting Secrets, Killer Speed, and Race Day. Now, they're all race-specific training DVDs. So they're ones that you'll, um, you can definitely get onto and... Look, it just does kill that time that you know you're not mightn't be racing, but you can catch up on um, a lot of good techniques and everything. They're being produced by BMXTraining.com, and they um, they are excellent. We've carried them for many many years, so definitely um, get onto those if you're feeling a bit bored at home because you can't race. Um, There's always um, opportunity to go for a ride with your mates. Obviously, not too many mates. Um, <clears throat> make sure you take uh, your time and enjoy the ride. Uh, be safe. Um, lots of public pump tracks these days and dirt jumps and that sort of thing. So make sure you're still enjoying the time on the bike. Um, one other thing, like the um, training DVDs, there is <laughs> <You got more. laughs> just happen to have. There is a pro racing skills book. Now this book, which is a 250 page training BMX race specific um, book, it is full of fantastic information. I know people that have been in the in BMX and train and coach and and still refer to this book. It gives you measurements for bikes, um, gearing, explains gearing ratio, how to take corners, how to take jumps. It's just a one-stop shop um, for BMX race. So uh, having that in your toolbox is a, a great idea. But um, in the current economic uh, current uh, racing climate. To have it at home, to be able to sit down and read through it, um, you'd probably pick up a, a heap of good information. So again, available at any bike shop around Australia um, or ECI BMX. So. We did do a product review on this a few years back. Um, so have a look on bmxultra.com for pro BMX skills um, hmm. and you'll be able to see how useful we found it. Um, <clears throat> it was very easy to sort of read, break down your skills uh, individually. Um, have a look through it, sort out what you're supposed to be doing, then go off and have a ride and give it a try and then come back to it. It's a really good book. Okay, there you go. So what else is there? One of the other <coughs> things we're gonna be introducing as we move forward is a dad joke battle. Now, we've got, um, you've probably seen this around a little bit and we just thought we'd incorporate that to have a little bit of fun on the show and that's, Half the reason of the show is just to have a bit of a laugh, usually at herself. <laughs> um, speaking about having a laugh at yourself, we have got a guy that's fairly shy in front of the camera. Uh, hates the camera. Hates the camera. His name's Sean Collins, uh, a.k.a. Dozer. So <laughs> not that Sean's aware of this. We haven't even told him yet. but Or asked. Or asked him, but he'll do anything we tell him to, especially if there's a camera involved. Um, so Sean will be the, the main character in the um, dad joke battle. And what he will do, he'll take on a, a pro rider or a BMX racer. Um, we have got Max Cairns lined up probably for the first episode. And uh, I'm sure we've got a few others that wouldn't mind stepping up and having a bit of fun. Not just the uh, pro riders, but just any BMX racer. So they're going to take on Sean Collins. Sean Collins dozer in a uh, dad joke battle so look forward to that in the next episode Ooh. what else you got mate uh, we've got some bikes to have a look at we certainly do some riders bikes now that's been quite popular we put that out there uh, in our first episode and what we've found is that we've had quite a few emails come in already on our email address. <laughs> <laughs> On ECITV at bmxultra.com. Don't have to worry about that because you just go to our website, yes. okay, ecibmx.com.au, and you've got all the links on there. And what we'll do is we'll show the um, 
the riders' bikes each month on there. So rather than just getting a bit of airplay um, during this episode or last episode, they'll actually be on the website as well. So yeah, let's uh, let's go into that. So you can introduce one or two of them while I get the all this. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone who did actually write in and shoot in the uh, photos of their bikes. We have Marley Humphreys, Sharon Watson, Glenn Swain, and there was somebody else who submitted their bike but didn't provide a name. So, um, so let's the rose get gold, started. Marley <coughs> Humphreys. So this first one is a rose gold yes, uh, to, which looks like oh. a custom color. It's a very nice. Um, nicely composed photo and a very nice looking bike, isn't it, Gary? Brilliant. And titanium spokes. I think there was a little write up from <coughs> it. Sorry, I'll take that off you. Marley wrote in, my bike is a Yes Pro Rose Gold Illusion and I have rainbow titanium spokes, which are my fave as they uh, change color when I race. My bike is super smooth and easy to ride. My Yes bike never lets me down. Riding makes me feel so free and clean of mind. Clears my mind. Clears my mind, exactly even not clear of mind. <laughs> Mine's a bit cloudy at the moment. And hashtag BMX <clears throat> for life. So yeah, a beautiful looking bike. Yeah, very nice. And I do like the titanium rainbow spokes. The other thing I don't mind in it is the layout. She's actually gone to a little bit of trouble to position the bike in the middle of the road. Almost looks like she fell off doing sprints. She wouldn't have been using a sprint block then. <laughs> so um yeah great photo even the sky and everything it's just um yeah she's taken a lot of effort to do that and thank you very much marley moving right along what have we got here we have a speed co speed co from glenn swain <clears throat> so this is the carbon velox frame which is kind of new i think uh it says please find attached photo of my ride which you see here uh, what I like about it is that it uh, has the ability to make fat old guys like me look like they have <laughs> half an idea out in the track. So I'm not sure if that happens before they hit the track um, and then it's a big giveaway. <clears throat> it's a Speedco Velox carbon frame, box components at the front end, seat and post combo and seat clamp, Onyx Helix and Ultra SS hubs laced into bulletproof Spectre carbon rims via Spectre tie spoke. So this is pretty decked out, this one, isn't it? It's crazy, it's off its head. Avian cadence cranks and Renan threaded chain ring with KMC chain, Shimano DXR brake set. Uh, the saying, all the gear but no idea rings true with this one. Uh, it certainly has all the gear. And look, one of the things I like the most about it is the colors. Yeah, I really like it, that it's not completely blacked out and, and it highlights the frame and the hubs. Go pies. <laughs> What's he standing it up with? A tube? It, it's some, a tube like, some like $5 tube box. <laughs> I mean, it's a, like a million dollar bike <laughs> and it's being sus su uh, supported by a, like a $7 or $5 tube. So, <laughs> probably could have gone to a little bit more effort there, I think. Um, but on, anyway, Glenn, Glenn you've, you've done well. Done well. Lovely <laughs> bike, mate. Fantastic. A real good rig. What have we got next? Okay, oh. we have Sharon Watson, who writes, My bike is a Pro XL Supercross Envy RS7. I should have got you to read this one. In neon pink. Full carbon, 20mm tapered speedline forks, speedline headset, head stem, seat clamp, cranks, resolution components, carbon rims with Profile Elite 15 20mm hubs. I love this bike because it just feels right and whenever i walk away from it i have to turn back to take a look it is and a head turner it is it is awesome it's uh same color as one we had last week uh yeah so Gemma in episode one had yep. uh, a pink one as well but she had uh, the supercross forks rather than the speedline forks yeah no um, this is beautiful <coughs> lovely setup and again look um take gone to a little bit of effort setting it up against a brick wall as opposed to just no, sort of, I don't know, having it on a track or something. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice looking setup. It looks like she's gone as far as armor rolling the tires. They do look awesome, don't they? <laughs> Jeez, I hope she rubs them off she, before she goes on the track. She presents it well. Yeah, no, very nice. <coughs> and again, uh, caliper brakes. 
actual yeah. fact, yeah. it's theme. A running theme. A running theme. Caliper, caliper. Even on Glenn Swain's Super Machine. It was, yes. Yeah. And caliper, yeah. So the three bikes and actual fact, the four bikes we've got tonight are all caliper brakes. Which, before we just showcase the last bike, that sort of gives us a segue into what we're going to start to discuss next week, uh, next episode. And that'll be the disc brake caliper brake um, controversy, as in um, everyone's opinions, the pros and cons. And um, so we're going to take it down, dissect it, and talk to riders that run either or either and see what their opinion is and see if we can come up with some information on it. Do we have any riders lined up for that yet? No, we haven't. No, we haven't. But I'm sure we've got a, uh, a vast range of riders that we can select from. So, um, so before we get on to the next <coughs> bike, um, email ECI TV <laughs> at bmxultra.com and tell us what you think of disc versus caliper as well. Yeah, or go to the website. We'll go to the website. Okay, is, so that's just website? easier. <laughs> ECIBMX.com.au. That's not right. Oh, it's not either. <laughs> it's not that ECI, easy. ECI, ECITV.com.au. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the last bike. Now, this the is this is pretty bike. trick, and this is quite unique, uh, and I don't think I've seen this in the race side of things before. Unfortunately, we didn't get a name with this one, but it's a real standout bike. It's a yes which is painted with glow-in-the-dark paint. The description is, my son had a tough year health-wise in 2018, uh, so I built this glow-in-the-dark yes to help get his mojo back. His bike lives in his bedroom, uh, like a nightlight. He's competitive and having fun and loves, uh, sorry, and his is the only glow-in-the-dark race bike that we know of. <clears throat> Okay, so that uh, glow-in-the-dark bike is um, a very unique unit and I believe almost one of a kind. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant effort. It's just a, a real shame that we didn't get a name with it. Um, we didn't get time to email back and, and find out. But um, what, what we did offer on our website is, on a new website, um, that there was going to be a bit of a, a prize. So, so what's it, the prize? In great consultation, which we haven't even spoken like about yet, but sticker pack and kicker headphones. Kicker headphones. <coughs> so um, yeah, kicker Phenom Talk Microfit smartphone compatible set of headphones or he earplugs or whatever you want to call them. Now I don't know about you, but um, there's some fantastic bikes, and I think my heart goes towards the glow in the dark. I was going to say as, the same. As this lady who's written in, and her son mightn't even be aware of it, has written in to say he had a bit of a tough year health-wise. So if we can bring a bit of joy to your life and... Um, Music to your ears. And yeah, yeah perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to say congratulations, whoever, but um, we haven't got a name. So. We didn't say much about the bike though, Gary. Can we go back a bit? Oh, yeah. This is Good the first, first bike that we've seen with colour. All well, the rest of them usually have black products, maybe a little bit of white. But this one's got red pretty much everywhere except for the glow in the dark bits. You didn't yeah. pick up on that? Yeah. Which are green at night. So green and red. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is very well co uh, colour coordinated. It's not just the glow in the dark, but it actually is a good looking rig. Mm. Um, they spent a lot of time colour matching it with um, rims, cranks, seat, mm. seat clamp, stem, everything. Uh, and look, one of the hardest things to do when you do um, match up a bike, especially with red componentry, is to try and get reds that match. Um, there's so many different reds, especially when you start to mix powder coating and anodizing, but you get darker reds and, mm. and um, lighter reds and candy apple reds and, and everything like that. And it's um, this one looks like it's actually pretty well color matched, which is um, very difficult when you're using red. Using black and white or even blues and things like that are quite simple, but red's one of the most difficult colours to um, colour match in componentry. So someone spent a lot of time doing this and uh, very worthy winners. Congratulations, no name. <laughs> You've done well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, send you an email and get your address details. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, one of the things we have coming up today, uh, tonight, today, whatever you want to call it, um, we've got an interview with um, Ryan Whitling, who's a, a fairly newcomer to the sport. He's 
I've known Ryan for many, many years. Uh, used to be a freestyler, and uh, I actually I've known him that long that he was a clean skin when I knew him. So, um, so what we'll do is we'll go to an interview with uh, Ryan and get his look at why he's got into the sport of BMX race, what's holding him in the sport of BMX, BMX race, and what sort of um, things he can see for the future of BMX and what um, what does keep him there. So. All right, Ryan, thanks for joining us for this interview. Um, just give uh, our viewers a bit of a DL on who you are and um, <laughs> where you're from. Um, DL, geez, okay. Uh, well, I'm obviously Ryan. Um, <laughs> uh, from Ringwood, um, and I currently race the 40 plus men's, um, and I come from Lidar Lynx BMX Club. So uh, what was it that brought you into racing? I know you've got a, a, a bit of a background in motocross and there is a BMX background there. Yeah, freestyle. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and I think we had a discussion before about how you kind of looked at BMX as just a bunch of odd bods. Oh yeah, sterile people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what was it that finally um, uh, made you pull the trigger and get involved in racing yourself? Um, it actually, it was my youngest boy, Texas. That's how it started. So he was six, and typically around that age, you're sort of going, oh, what's he going to get into? You can't just play Lego your whole life. And he had a little, you know, BMX bike, and we just took him on a track one day, and he had to pump around, and, you know, he enjoyed that. And then, I don't know, really quickly, we, we joined a club. We went down to Ludo, signed up, and and um, it just went from there. Um, but you weren't riding with him to start off with, No, no, not at all. We were just, I was just happy being the berm dad. And then, um, you know, I saw a couple of older guys race, and I was like, oh, it looks like fun. And actually, I'll get a bike. That way I can ride around in Texas. It'll help him develop skills. And um, yeah, it didn't take long before, you know, members from the club were like, hey, you should do a clubby. You should do this. Come to gate nights. And, you know, so the next thing you know, I've got a license and a number plate and there I am doing it. <laughs> um, so at what point did you actually decide to take that seriously? Like, sure, it's a bit different just turning up and doing gates and, and running yeah. clubbies. Yeah. Um, I think when... when other members of the club sort of went, oh, we've got our Open coming up. You should, you should race there. Give it a go, you know. And I thought, oh, yep, all right. Had a go. Met some really good people. People are still sort of, you know, even though I've moved up in age bracket, still, you know, speaking stage and, and hanging out and stuff like that. Um, and then I went, yep, all right, I'm going to take it serious. And then I reckon it would have been about four weeks after that, I went and snapped my wrist. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so that was the, uh, the hurdle pretty quickly out of the way. And you were working for yourself at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So you, at, at that point you didn't think, well, this is too dangerous for me, maybe I should stop? Um, no, actually, it was the opposite. I was sort of a bit more like, oh, I'm not I'm not beginning and ending it right there and then. And it was more a case of, I suppose, the, the wife that sort of went, look, you're gonna do what you're gonna do. So um, once the cast came off, straight back into it and probably harder and actually committed to actually um, developing skills and and track speed. So you almost found the injury was more of a motivation. Yeah, yeah, a, a motivational <coughs> warning <laughs> of like, learn what you're doing. Just you can't just pedal and and hope that you stay on. So. So you don't get flashbacks to that accident when you're racing. You don't think, oh, maybe I need to pull the pin here because this is gonna throw nah, me off the bike. No, nah, not, not at all. Actually, I think because I I did the accident at Park Orchards, and then when I got back on. Obviously, the park orchards open came up, and that was the first thing in my mind is that that one jump, and then after the first motor, it was it was gone. So it's uh, interesting because a lot of um, other older guys would just say, "Oh, you know, I've, I've got to get to work on Monday. I'm going to pull the pin. There's no way I want to hurt myself." And a, a lot of those guys you actually see come back, and then they'll do another injury, and it's like, "Oh, this is for real this time. I'm going to stop." Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> from there, um, you started racing a lot more. Um, What's the, say, biggest event you've been to so far? Um, was would have been the Vic titles last year at Casey. So, and that again was, uh, there was more to it than just me racing. I had Texas racing the Sprockets and then, you know, a little bit after I started racing, our middle-aged daughter, she was like all interested. So we got her into racing only last April. So by Vic titles, it was like, all right, we're all going as family. and. <laughs> Entering states, so that was probably the biggest one we've done so far. So, um, the kids have had any serious injuries as well. 
Nah, no. nah, just ego. So I think, <laughs> well, you've seen Texas crash. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, no, they've, they've bounced pretty well, I think. Okay. So, so um, what does your wife think of um, the potential of the danger of the sport? She doesn't get upset by it or anything? Nah, I think she got over that pretty quick. Like, she's seen, you know, her baby boy, you know, hit the ground a couple of times and cut some bruises, and you know, I think she's accepted this is what it is. And I think... Um, you know, when you're at the track, you're with your club, under your club tent, and you're watching all the kids, and they're all bouncing, they're all getting up, and they're all racing, and they're all succeeding in their own ways. And um, I don't think that's a thought of hers anymore. It's more of a case of, you know, when are you going to go up to staging? You got your helmet? You got your gloves? You know, that She's a real BMX mum. She's com- <clears throat> completely committed to that now, which is really weird. And I think half the time, pe- people at my age, I think, like um, when you've got that support, it's not just like, oh, and you're going off to ride your kid's bike. It's like... Um, you know, she's part of our little team, you know? So, yeah, yeah. so she's not out with a stopwatch when you're doing sprints or anything like nah, that? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Like, oh, she's pretty hard, though. She definitely, you know, knows how to yell pedal, so, which I think Scarlett was sick of hearing for a little while. She's like, I am! So, but, yeah, it's good. Are we going to see her on a bike anytime soon? No. No, <laughs> no I won't allow it. <laughs> no, like, we can bounce, but we need mum. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've been racing for what about a year now? And it's just on a year now. Um, and where do you see yourself in the future, Derek? Can you just keep riding, or do you think yeah. there's a point where you think, well, well, maybe I am getting a bit too old? And nah, no. and, and that's the that's the best thing that's happened. Like the, the guys that I've met and raced against, um, you know, people like yourself, Comport, and all those sort of guys that have, have raced for decades. What are you up to? Your fifth decade now, something like that. Yes, yeah. That to me, I just didn't go. I've got time ahead. Of me. <laughs> you know. Um, and you guys and Compo, those sort of guys, kick my ass. So <laughs> it, it sort of, in its own way, it motivates me. I sit there and go, all right, these guys have got 10 years on me and they're kicking my ass. So it just makes me go, you know, want to go hard, I guess. So um, what would you say to other BMX dads that are sitting on the fence about racing BMX and, and might want to give it a crack? What would you give them as words of encouragement to make them uh, pull the trigger and... Just and do it. Just do it and ease into it. Like, just don't just go pedaling your ass off. <laughs> but um, I think that's what I found too, though, starting off. And I, I found other sports that I've been into before, there's uh, some sort of an elitist type thing where BMX was completely different, where it was very accepting. Everyone's really sort of positive and encouraging. So, you know, uh, which is weird because you, you just feel like you don't want to be that dad that's sort of embarrassing himself <laughs> and then suddenly you realise you're not a dad, you're on the gate with races and you're racing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, you get a sense of pride in that, I guess, when you're a, a gate full of races. That's how I feel anyway. Um, you take it pretty seriously and you've got coaching. Do you think coaching has made a difference to your, um, to your racing and would you encourage people to get some coaching before they started yeah. racing? Yeah, absolutely. Even a, a basic um, level of, of coaching, whichever. I was just lucky that um, I was seeking coaching mainly for Texas to start because he's so young, he sort of needed to be guided a little bit. And then with Scarlett and then, um, you know, through Lillardar, we met Josh. And I don't know, I was just doing that sort of like hover from the group and I was like just listening like, okay, so yeah, this, that and that and that. And... Um, I think he just got sick of me hassling him. <laughs> He's like, all right. And uh, I got in. All right. So, yeah. But it definitely, I think, you need a degree of, of coaching. Yeah. Just get you going. Yeah. yeah. Keep on two wheels. All right. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. I think that's all we've got time for. Um, cool. Fist bump, elbow bump. Yeah, yeah it's, it's safe <laughs> and uh, viral free. But thanks for having me. No worries. Thanks very much. Well, I'm sure we'll see you again. I hope so. You've been thanks, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Interview. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was quite good. Um, my mother is calling me at the moment, so I better not answer her. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much, Ryan. That was that was quite quite good. Um, just before we do go, there's a couple of things we'd like to cover. One is we have touched on it, but at our new website. So we threw a website together quickly, so it's easier for us than remembering the email address. <laughs> so at ecitv.com.au um, you'll be able to find a little bit of information about uh, what we're going to produce in the future this show we've got product reviews um, and 
We've also got um, tech tips. So um, I don't even know if Paul Knox is aware of it, but we'll have the School of Hard Knocks. Um, Paul's been around BMX for many years as well, and um, he's quite a very capable person and gets to the ins and outs of um, everything BMX. So if there's anyone anyone who can line up a chain or, or service a bike or look after a bike, it's Paul Knox. Um, He's got a steel trap, steel trap memory, and researches things uh, to the nth degree. So, if you've got something you'd like to know, whether it is how to line up a chain, how to calculate a, a gear um, gear ratio, or the correct positioning of your handlebars, or the right size bike for you, apart from <laughs> purchasing a copy of Pro Skills book. Um, right into us and we'll ask Paul Knox. He'll come on and um, and explain it all to you. Now, you know, in regards to the Pro Skills book, I know Paul Knox is one person who's got a copy of this and does refer to it quite regularly. Even though he is a, a, um, got a photographic memory, he still refers to this book a lot. So that'll be um, up in future episodes, the School of Hard Knocks. So on top of those videos, <coughs> um, you'll be able to see uh, riders bikes uh, um, show us your bike se segment photo so you can go back later on without having to flick through the video to, to find the bikes and contact details yep contact um, details and a little bit of information about Gary and myself so um, you should find that that will be growing over time but right now we just got a quick uh, website there for you to contact us so please jump on give us your feedback give us a bit of input uh, requests anything you'd like as long as we can achieve it and it is g-rated we will do it <laughs> so, <laughs> um, okay I think that's probably about it for this week's or this month's or this fortnight's episode yet to be determined <laughs> so, <laughs> I'd love to say on seven at seven seven days from now but who knows thanks very much for joining us we'll see you next time no worries. Cheers. See you out in the track. And just let us know when you have. Is it going? It's going. So the red sound record. How do you do? You, you don't see anything. You don't need to see anything. Oh. That's to come back from being dressed in the hazmat suits. Oh. <laughs> so I thought you were doing that time. For the audio. <laughs> What'd you do? I just hit it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I just tapped it. Um, do we right. want to thank Ryan? Uh, do you reckon? Do we want to thank Ryan? We can thank Ryan now. We can thank Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Hey, Ryan, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was quite good. Um, my mother is calling me at the moment.